Hello, and welcome to a Space Foundation Emerging Trends interview. I'm Shelley Brunswick, the Chief Operating Officer. Today, we have an exciting discussion about the emerging trends in the UAE. This international interdisciplinary panel of experts will share their journeys and observations about the trends taking place in the region. Let me introduce our amazing panelists. Kim Schofield is the managing partner for O2K Limited. She is a proven business development executive with over 35 years of experience with international business development, specializing in the Middle East and North Africa. Kim's clients have included globally recognized companies in a variety of fields to include defense, aviation, hospitality, energy industries, and professional advisory services. Welcome, Kim. We're excited to have you join us today. Thank you so much, Shelley. It is a pleasure to be here. And our other panelist today is a fabulous expert from Washington, D.C. Dana Lynette is the president and CEO of the Summit Group D.C., a uniquely capable strategic consulting firm that empowers private companies and U.S. government clients to meet mission objectives, access opportunities, grow operations, and take decisive actions to position for the future. Summit Group DC also provides unique insights and education on the aerospace defense sector to the institutional investor community. She is a former career diplomat with the U.S. Department of State. Dana is a long-recognized international and national security expert and public speaker with over 25 years' experience both in and out of government. Recently, she has taken over as the head of public sector at Lilt Inc., a Silicon Valley tech company serving the U.S., UK and Australian governments with specialized language, AI and machine learning translation software powering national security missions. Well, welcome Dana, we're excited to have you join us today. Thank you, Shelley, it's a pleasure to be here with you and Kim. Wonderful, well, I'd like to start with you, Kim, what an exciting uh, perspective you have from the UAE. So would you please share your insights on the emerging trends that you're witnessing transpire right now? Well, thank you very much, Shelley. I think what I'd like to start talking about first is economic value add programs. Uh, Economic value add programs are most commonly known as offsets, which is generally a defense industry type of program. But there's also in-country value programs. Now, this is an emerging trend because even though ICV, in-country value programs, were originated by ADNOC, they're now being embraced by all of the industry, Emirates and gradually multiple industry sectors. In-country value programs require that you have an audited ICV score. Basically, how much are you and your company contributing to the UAE economy? And presumably, the higher your company's score, the better advantage your company has when bidding on tenders. You, because you see, an ICV score is actually a percentage of your investment in local assets, infrastructure, employees, and supply chain. So bottom line, if you want to do business in the UAE, you should be looking at a long-term relationship. And economic value add programs, such as offset and in-country value, should be leveraged to benefit the development of the UAE space industry. But as far as specific industries go uh, and and emerging market trends, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the UAE is at the forefront of developing policy uh, within artificial intelligence and leveraging it, including smart city initiatives and healthcare. Electric vehicles. There are a lot of opportunities to provide infrastructure to support the future of electronic vehicles in the UAE, and especially with with regards to recycling of gas-powered vehicles. I feel this is an up and coming opportunity. Healthcare, Cleveland Clinic was named the number one smart hospital in the GCC and healthcare for all, access to healthcare for everyone is the key theme for Expo 2020. And last but certainly not least is space. UAE has a long-term strategy for space exploration with the aim to have Emiratis on Mars in a generation. And as we all know, If you solve for space, you solve for humanity. And the problems we solve for space, the technology we develop for for space, agriculture, water, security, communication, it's all applicable to humanity. 
We could discuss each and every to one of these topics above for a very long time, but for me, those are just some of the highlights. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kim. That's amazing insight. And we're going to dive a little more deeper into all of those areas um, in small slices. But I'd like to ask Dana for her perspective and insight on the emerging trends that she's seen take place in the UAE. Thank you, Shelley. Um, well, I echo Kim's uh, excellent overview, and we'll dive a little bit into that by first saying that that the Emirates is a place that is a longstanding partner. It's got an incredibly, uh, you know, it's got a great infrastructure set up for business. It's a very mature partner in comparison with a lot of other places where investors might go. And there is a lot going on. Um, while Kim mentioned the in-country value programs, key to this, I think, is a trend that um, that businesses are flocking around, and that's around the localization infrastructure, localization industries, and making sure that companies are able to uh, set up and thrive in the right ways there. So I would also e echo the AI theme. I think um, you know, the Emiratis are doing a great deal of research on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and this is one of the core areas where they're cooperating with U.S., with US firms. On the US U, UAE, you know, relationship front officially, um, you know, there have been a number of economic dialogues and they have always featured women's empowerment um, and women tech entrepreneurs in that dialogue. So there's a lot going on. I know we're gonna talk about women, we'll come back to that, but I also just wanna close by highlighting some key uh, some key aspects of the, the space relationship, and that is that since 2020, uh, the UAE has signed formal, uh, formal agreements with the United States, with NASA, as well as the, the NASA Artemis Accords. And uh, the, the UAE Space Agency is now training and, and working with U.S. astronauts along, alongside American and other international astronauts. Um, the this is actually a really exciting area. And I think that, you know, UAE being the first Arab country to reach Mars with the Hope Probe and, you know, with all the excitement going on, I think they are really proving to be international leaders in space. And I think we're going to see much more cooperation in that field. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dana. And since you've opened the door to it, I'm going to follow on and come right through that door. Since both of you are female entrepreneurs, but what are the emerging trends for female entrepreneurship in the UAE? And Kim, I'll start with you since you are an amazing and successful female entrepreneur in the UAE. Well, I will say, you know, women are very ambitious in this country. And, you know, with over 70% of the higher education graduates being women, the sky here is really the limit. And there is no difference in opportunities for men and women, in, in my humble opinion. Uh, I have personally lived and worked in the UAE uh, you know, since 1990. Um, well, I've lived here since 2003, but I've been working in the region since 1990. And I can tell you that everything I have, I have tried to do, every door I've, I've, I've opened, I've, I've been able to open it. It's, I have not been impeded in any way by being by being a woman, and I and I work in a in a rather uh, male dominated industry, uh, primarily defense. But uh, you know the the sky is the limit. Uh, the UAE has done some remarkable things. They have mandated that that uh, public companies have fifty percent of their their board board of directors members being women. Uh, you know, they they have they have um, they're, they're rolling out the red carpet. I mean, to to try to enable women to have work opportunities. I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be, though, it, it is going to be that a lot of the a lot of the work opportunities are in the big cities, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. I think the challenge is going to be is to spread those opportunities out amongst all, amongst all of the Emirates. Because culturally, um, you know, women, women, you know, it's a very, the UAE is a very family-based country. And women are, women are very, very much want to be with their families. 
So providing those work opportunities around all of the Emirates is uh, is going to be a, an opportunity and a challenge uh, for the UAE. Well, thank you, Kim. I think that's really highlights a, a number of challenges, not just in the UAE, but around the world, even in America, where if we want to bring more diversity and inclusion into the space ecosystem and create more entrepreneurs, we mm-hmm. also have to look at uh, the diversity of women and other underrepresented groups to help make it easier for them to access and come into the space ecosystem. So I think that's a great highlight. And I, I, as a a wife as well. I know I want to spend time with my husband and he likes to spend time with me. Mm -hmm. So we have to find ways to make that work. So great insight. Dana, I'd love to get your thoughts about female entrepreneurship in the UAE or even in general, as you're seeing it from your perspective in uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I mean, the view from Washington, from my personal viewpoint, uh, is that I'm quite jealous of the UAE that they have this quota (laughs) because as a female business owner and someone who's often been the only female in the room working in aerospace and defense, um, you know, at the executive level, it's, it's, you know, we've seen how in the United Arab Emirates, they've proven that having that mandate has not weakened the talent pool. In fact, it has completely strengthened and been a total key driver in their economy. So they've disproven all the sort of counter arguments that we often hear about, you know, setting up that kind of a system. So I hope more of the world looks to UAE and to that example. And it's not just in the in the private sector and boards. I mean, 50 percent of the UAE space agency are women. And think about that. That's an incredible driver. Um, The flip side of that trend that I've noticed, and this is with many of my male uh, friends and associates, business associates in the UAE, is I'm watching them actually, and I hope this isn't too controversial to say, but I watch the men actually take up more more of the the, uh, burden at home as well with family life, spending more time with their children, um, you know, sometimes dabbling in the cooking and the cleaning. Um, They might not be very public about it, but I think that that's kind of a nice thing to see is uh, the new generation of Emirati men who are really embracing a more inclusive family model, especially when both parents are often out uh, working. So again, I can only hope that that becomes more of a trend uh, everywhere. But I think for women entrepreneurs, the the female entrepreneurs I've seen from uh, the UAE have been pretty fearless and uh, and have really set an example of, as Kim said, they can really do anything and they know they can do anything and their government is empowering them to do anything and That's everything. Right. And their families are also stepping up. So while it is a very traditional Um, country in many ways, it's super modern. And I think this could be a huge blueprint, you know, watching this and these trends um, could be a real blueprint for uh, fueling uh, similar uh, economic growth and intellectual, um, you know, powerhousing across the Middle East. So I'm really excited about the leadership role that, that Emirati women are playing across the Middle East. And I would say, As a female uh, entrepreneur sitting here in Washington, even it's affecting me and I live in a a pretty, you know, open place. But I think that they're showing that we have a lot to learn about what we can do to make things better here as well. Fantastic. Uh, Excellent answer. So for female entrepreneurs, whether you're in the Emirates or you'd like to move to the Emirates, great (laughs) opportunities to be entrepreneurs there. Both of you in your opening statements talked a lot about the emerging technology, Dana with artificial intelligence and Kim with uh, virtual reality and other technologies, and all of those intersect in the space industry. So I'd really like to understand from your perspective, how is the UAE promoting its space sector and creating international awareness for investors around the globe to seek those opportunities that are emerging in the UAE? Well, I'll start out by saying that, uh, first of all, that the UAE cabinet, chaired by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, recently approved the National Agenda for Non-Oil Export Development, which includes space. Now, this will be an integrated framework for efforts to increase UAE's foreign trade, promote Emirati products and access new markets all over the world. However, what I think needs to happen to to truly promote everything is I think the first thing that needs to happen is 
we need to map and audit what manufacturing capability exists in each industry sector, space being, being one of them, throughout the UAE. And then with that information, we can identify what the knowledge and technology gaps are and the opportunities for foreign investment to, to potentially fulfill. You know, the UAE is among the top 20 countries in foreign trade indicators, and they've developed an economic structure that is capable of coping with the, the changing global economy. And one of their key objectives, strategic objectives, is to top to be the top one of the top ten economies in the world. So I think if 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 they could map out each industry sector, what what manufacturing capability exists, um, and we could understand the gaps, what a tool that would be to to attract investment uh, to to the UAE. It would help us create the ecosystems necessary to to make that industry sector successful including space uh, I don't know I mean that's that's what I think what I think needs to be done so absolutely excellent information I will share the space foundation is doing some data analytics and research on those what are the mapping and the skill sets and the career path opportunities and what are the sectors we need those career paths in as mm -hmm. we pivot to a more technology uh, world. And that's not just space technology. We're seeing technology exponentially grow in all sectors of the economy. So exciting. Now, Dana, I'm going to follow back to you. And again, from your perspective, you know, how do you see the UAE and what are your some of your recommendations for supporting the investment market to facilitate that international cooperation in space sector growth and, and as well as the export opportunities that are available both in the Emirates externally, but also exporting opportunities into the Emirates. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah. This is a great question. And you know, it's, you've known me long enough to know this is one of my favorites. Um, but you know, I can I can reiterate that the the business climate and infrastructure, the regulatory infrastructure in the UAE is very favorable to investment. So that's a, an excellent place to start. And the Emirati government's been very deliberate, not just in diversifying, but diversifying in like really leaning into the future and creating the regulatory and infrastructure um, pieces that need to, to be in place in order to enable that. So, and, and then thirdly, they've been great branders. Um, and with that, I think, you know, they are getting the word out. And we do have a lot of U.S. companies very interested in, you know, pivoting into uh, the, the Emirati business cl uh, culture, especially around um, the space industry, because space touches on climate, it touches on health sciences. A lot of the experimentation we do on Earth is now being um, you know, uploaded into the to space experimentation. And that's been going on for quite a while, but it's really accelerated. I think uh, my advice would be for Emiratis who want to find partners in the U.S. and uh, maybe and create, you know, partnerships here or for Americans who want to uh, invest and localize in, in, the, uh, in the Emirates. Um, I would highly recommend uh, the U.S. government resources. I'm not speaking on behalf of the U.S. government. I no longer work for the U.S. government. But I do recommend to many of my clients uh, that they really seek the Commerce Department advocacy centers um, you know, leveraging the advocacy center to help them officially with their pursuits within the UAE, but also uh, to help find partners, key partners and, uh, and, and open doors. And the same goes for the U.S. Embassy and the commercial section in uh in Abu Dhabi but certainly they're they're operating in all of the emirates uh so anyone who needs assistance can can get those uh, advocacy resources to find partners to get uh you know tie your ambitions to US and Emirati bilateral policy and making sure that those messages are linking up that you're meeting with the right ministries that you have the right uh advocacy because i think both countries are very focused on jobs and so really hitting the embassies, whether it's the Emirati embassy here in Washington or the U.S. embassy in Abu Dhabi and those missions there across each of the countries, but really tapping into that enthusiasm for this partnership, uh, the, the depth and breadth of this partnership, there's really space for everyone to play, whether you're a tiny company or, or a, a band of one, or whether you're a, a, a huge company on the Fortune 500. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dana. And I'm going to give Kim a minute to follow up because Kim, on some past visits, has given me the opportunity to speak with the American Chamber and the role that they play in helping American companies uh, do business in the Emirates. So, Kim, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the American Chamber and other organizations in the Emirates that individuals who want to do business in the Emirates could also connect with in addition to the State Department or Department of Commerce. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Um, as past president of the, it used to be the American Business Group of Abu Dhabi, now it's the American Chamber and I'm on their board uh, programs director, offsets chair. Um, I can tell you that, uh, that engaging with the American Chamber of Commerce, whether it's in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, um, you know, the mission of our organizations is to promote, tr promote trade, commerce, and goodwill between the United States and the UAE. Uh, the American Chamber is a true partner with the with the UAE government. Uh, we've you know we've put forward, for example, like a co the COVID task force where we've worked with every single group in the, in the UAE government to talk about the next steps. You know what what's the COVID nineteen recovery going to look like in every you know in every industry sector. Um, the Am American Chamber, I mean helps, you know, if you're a member of the American Chamber as an American company, it's a phenomenal resource, a network of organizations that that will help you get in front of the right or right organizations. It is a it is a tremendous informational resource. In fact, uh, September 30th, we're having our annual business roundtable and the theme of the roundtable is digitalization and for a sustainable economy and how digitalization is going to change every single industry and make us hopefully run faster and farther and be more efficient. Uh, but there are also challenges as well. So, I mean, I cannot encourage people more to tap into the American Chamber, whether it's in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, and there are other foreign business groups too. Um, I'm just a little bit biased. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the American Chamber of Abu Dhabi and, and, and the activities that we get involved in and, the, and our track record and successes that, that we've had. So thank you. Um Amazing. And I was honored to, to join one of your meetings for the American Chamber and have the opportunity to present about all the activities the Space Foundation is doing as well. Uh, Dana, I know you had another great resource you wanted to share as well for business entrepreneurs to do business. Would you please share that with us? Yeah, I'm, yes, absolutely. And just picking up on Kim's theme, I mean, that same chamber is also very active here in, in mm -hmm. Washington and engaging the community. Yes. We have the U.S. UAE Business Council, and I would really recommend that because these, these chambers, whether you're here in the U.S. or whether you're in the Emirates, they really do engage all the political levels. They talk about all the key themes, about all the things that interest uh, business, all the different sectors, and it's a great networking tool, but also a great informational tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I echo Kim, like all of these business associations, like, um, you know, the U.S. Uh, UAE Business Council and the chambers, huge, huge advantage. And there are some women's uh, chambers as well that we can, you know, that you can tap into. Fantastic. I, I, it's always good to share resources with people on how can they actually take an mm -hmm. actionable step to move in this direction. And you have given us plenty of tools. Let's pivot to something you both talked about in your opening comments. And Dana, you started it with the signing and the bilateral agreement between the UAE Space Agency and NASA. And so I'd really like to hear more thoughts about this uh, agreement, the astronaut training uh, mission, the signing the Artemis Accords, and how do you see this uh, partnership progressing? And then Kim, I'll circle back to you afterwards. Uh, so op comments over to you, Dana. Thank you. Well, I, I think the whole Artemis project and the ambitions that I think the civil, what I would call the civilian space sector, uh, where we're all cooperating internationally together to go to the moon and then eventually to habitat, to habitate the moon and then to launch from the moon into deeper space. I mean, this is probably one of the most ambitious periods in human history that I think future generations will look back on and, and think, oh my God, what are they doing? Um, and, uh, you know, I just came back from, from Rocket City, Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, it was pretty heartening to see the level of uh, international cooperation going on with NASA and the UAE being 
such a, a key partner in that. I, I, with their astronauts now training alongside U.S. astronauts, that is huge. And I think you know, especially to be one of the first or the first Arab country to be, you know, really at the forefront of all of this space exploration is is pretty key for UAE. And I, I'm hoping that that international cooperation leads to uh, some deeper partnerships, obviously, as we as we move through the whole like space program evolution. But also, I think that the Emiratis are inspiring other countries uh, in the region and even beyond the region and showing by example that, you know, ambition truly knows no bounds. And I know that the, the feedback I've heard is the Emiratis are pretty well received that, you know, they're very, people like working with them. They're adding a tremendous amount of value to this program. And because the Emirates is so focused on all these various research areas that that research is then, um, you know, is able to be, co you know, com comported into that, uh, the wider ecosystem. Obviously these are early days <laughs> and these accords are like a year, a year inked. Um, but again, this is the beginning and definitely not the end of a really great journey that I'm very excited to uh, be witnessing. Excellent. And I'm going to turn it over to Kim, but before I do, I did want to share that through the decades that NASA has been pursuing space exploration, there are thousands of patents that are waiting to be commercialized yeah. if you go to the NASA Technology mm -hmm. Transfer Office, and there are grants that you can apply for to commercialize this technology. So not only are you commercializing space technology and bringing it to market as an entrepreneur, you're creating a job for yourself and others and benefiting all of us here on Earth. So this, this relationship, and Dana, as you talked about, the research that the Emiratis are going to do, the unlocking of technology and then the ability to commercialize it, yes. create jobs, and benefit lives here on Earth is amazing. Kim, what are your thoughts as you're seeing it um, in the Emirates, the partnership with NASA and the Artemis Accords? Um, how is this bilateral agreement working to better and inspire things there in the Emirates? I think the, the cooperation between NASA and Artemis is just going to be the beginning of a, of a long-standing relationship for the you know for furthering space exploration i mean we're just we're just getting started um i think that you know something you mentioned a minute ago shelly you know all of those innovations sitting on a shelf at nasa just waiting on someone to 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 say hey i want to you know i want to commercialize that i want to invest in that what a beautiful beautiful platform for le leveraging offset uh, to bring to bring technologies here, uh, it's it's something that this that that this country is looking for is to bring innovative technologies here, and what a wonderful platform for for offset and potentially um, bringing additional local value and economic value here. But I think we're we're at the we're at the early days, and and I think that uh, the sky is the limit. Pardon the pun with <laughs> where we can go with with uh, with the NASA and Artemis project. So. I, I think that's great, Kim. And one of the things the Space Foundation does through our Center for Innovation and Education is under our Space Foundation University program, which is all about entrepreneurship, leadership, uh, mentorship, and helping to grow those entrepreneurs so that they can commercialize and develop that technology. And so that's an exciting area for the Emirates as well to partner with universities to create incubators and accelerators and Absolutely. commercialize this technology. So now I do want to do a follow on with you, Kim, because you have a series called Inspiration Tuesdays. And I really want to understand your thoughts on why you selected to talk about inspiration and what the value of inspiration is in the space sector, as well as for entrepreneurship. And, and we've talked about women leaders and so on. So tell me more about your thoughts on inspiration. Thank you very much, Shelley. As you know, inspiration uh, is, is an area that I am passionate about. I am most passionate about it. You know, as a business executive and thought leader, I feel that inspiration is an area that we must focus family, education, corporate and government resources on. Because you see, inspiration is where it all starts. It is the first building block, the A and the ABCs, if you will, that gets the innovation and the technology and the leadership attributes in the children of today, which will enable the success of tomorrow. 
You know, without inspiration, there will be no entrepreneurs to take risks, no one to start up new small businesses, no innovators to develop new technologies and invent medical breakthroughs. There'll be no space explorers. And what about the importance of inspiring the leadership of tomorrow? You know, we, we here in the UAE are super fortunate to live here because this country is leadership exhibits the full spectrum of leadership attributes, diplomacy, decorum, empathy, and decisive action and vision. How do we inspire the next generation to not only lead, but want to lead and to lead well? And I'm not talking about just states and governments, I'm talking about industry leaders. We desperately need inspiration right now, especially at this moment in time, to get our economies back on track after the devastation of COVID-19. Inspiration will help humanity to rise up and prevail for the future of our children and our children's children. You're inspiring, Kim. And based on inspiration, I want to now pivot to the importance of advocacy and awareness. So Mm -hmm. Dana, what are your thoughts on advocacy and awareness, not only for entrepreneurship, women leadership, in the space sector and collaborations, but what are your thoughts about advocacy and awareness in general? Well, I'm gonna pick up on on Kim's uh, inspiration and motivation and just say, we have to start with ourselves. We have to lead by example. We have to Mm -hmm. find our own inspiration as the very first building block in all of the ABCs of inspiration. And I think once we we have the courage and the commitment to find our own voice and figure out what inspires us, what problems do we want to solve? How do we want to contribute to humanity and to bettering this planet and to bettering ourselves and each other? Then I think we can pivot to you know, inspiring other people and building that community. And I think, you know, I always say, whoever has helped you pay it forward 10 times. I've been blessed to have so many people help me and believe in me at like every stage of my life. And to recognize that and pay it forward 10 times. I mean, even if it's one time or two times, but for me, it's 10 times. Um, But, you know, I think that's where it all starts. And I think once we create that energy of, you know, taking that step and being conscious of what we're doing and finding other people who who want to be a part of the solution and to lead by example and to to lead and continue to inspire others, no matter what job you have, whether it's a, a shoeshine person or the CEO of a company, you know, everybody has something to give. And so I just say that it starts with ourselves and we build from there. Well, on that inspirational note, I I would love to continue to go on because this is such a great conversation. And I I hope that you'll both come back and join me again. But as we wrap up today, I'll start with Kim. Are there any any parting comments you'd like to share with our audience? Yes. If you can dream it, you can do it. If you want it, go for it. There is, uh, you know... Don't take no for an answer. Stop apologizing. Um, that's that's I guess from from a, from a women you know a women's standpoint you know uh, and an advocacy standpoint, but also as far as space you know for me it is it is the most important investment I feel that governments can make in their hum, in their citizens in their humanity in their in their in their states and countries because. Space gives to every, gives back to everyone. A, a dollar invested in space is a dollar invested in humanity. And when it comes to women, you invest in space and you invest in women. So that, that's where I'd like to leave that. Wonderful. Dana, anything else you'd like to share with our audience today? Yep. I would just say the only limitations that exist are in our brains And the more you demolish those limitations in your mind, the more you can do what Kim says, and that's to dream big and and succeed at that. And I would just say the second piece that I'd like to conclude on is that we are at a time where our earth is imperiled. You know, we are as a human race, one human race all together, forget governments, forget races and all that one human race trying to find 
our survival on this planet. And sometimes, some days we, we wake up thinking it's not looking good. But I think space is the place where we are leveraging that technology to make life better on Earth and to actually win that race for survival. It's not to escape to Mars so we can trash the planet. That's not the plan. The plan is, yes, continue deep space exploration, but for the benefit of preserving ourselves and coming together mm -hmm. as a human race to save this gift that we have, and that is our Earth. And I think the Emiratis have prioritized climate. They have, again, shown their leadership in that. And I welcome any and all who want to work with the Emiratis on that um, to get involved because this that's really the game here. Well, thank you, Kim and Dana. We are grateful for your time and we hope you'll join us for a future conversation because we just barely touched the surface today. That's right. Thank you for having We'd us. We'd love to. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, if you and our audience are interested in learning more about our Space Foundation programs or watching other International Emerging Trends webinars, go to spacefoundation.org and check out our Emerging Trends series. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again. There's a place for everyone in the new global space ecosystem.